And welcome back to another Bob Last Hi. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about me going back to an old painting I've been wanting to finish up. It's been hanging around for about a year. This is a, a painting of my drip trees. You probably have seen me do this before. I put a whole lot of paint up on the top, let it drip down, and voila, I've got some trees. Now, I don't want to get all these drips as a tree trunk. So I'm gonna get rid of some of them. Big brush, work on the skyline a little bit more and develop the color to more closer to my color wheel. All right, I'm so excited to get back into this painting here. And it's pretty dramatic right now, but I wanna kind of clean it up a little bit and make it my trees, my drip trees. So my table is all set up. I have the colors warm and cool. Some reds, purples, blues, a couple of dollops of white to mix in with this. Two buckets of water, <laughs> paper towels, my color wheel, big wide brush. And of course, this is my viewfinder that tells me the different values of value finder. See, I can look up like that and I can see the darks and the lights. Not necessarily the color, but the darks and the lights. I also have one of these. This is called a reduction glass. Good luck trying to find one of these. These are really old. They're three inches in diameter, but it makes things smaller. That way I don't have to go to the other end of the room to see what the painting looks like. I can stand right here and see the whole painting right from this. Pretty cool, isn't it? So it's a rare find if you can find one of these reduction glasses. So along with my wide brushes, my value finder, I've got a good attitude, most importantly, and I'm ready to go in and see what I can find inside this wonderful paint that's been developing all these years. I'm gonna do that right now, mix up my paints now. And I like to paint at arm's length. A Little bit of hot pink in that blue, ultramarine blue, more white. I'm gonna brighten this whole thing up a little bit. So as I said, I wanted to do, develop the sky, the skyline a little bit more. It's awfully dark up in here. Add some more colors up in here. Make it more painterly. Notice I'm holding the brush at the end here. Not up like this. You'll end up doing this. You can't see it. So there's a reason brushes are long, so you can hold them back here, <laughs> okay? Plenty of room, nothing else is on the table to interfere with my thinking. If there is any thinking in here. Anyway, that's the beginning. Bring some of that color down into here too. Ah. This is the background. I'm picking and choosing my own tree trunks now. Many are called, but few are chosen. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue on with this and you can follow along with some of these stills. Here we go. Starting with a light blue opaque mixture of titanium white and some blue, I paint out some of the trees in the skyline that just don't need to be there. Make the skyline a little bit more interesting and then halfway down, also some more of that blue and start to develop the tree trunks. Remember to paint all over. And while I'm doing that, don't stay in one place too long, I start to develop the bottom of the ground all the way across with a yellow line. Now you can see the landscape. So after applying all that wet, wonderful acrylic rubbing alcohol, Isopropyl rubbing alcohol is sprayed on some of the wet areas, which kind of breaks it apart, makes it splashy, and uh, has a nice effect. And that's really a stretch of great sky holes along the way. Now I use paper towels. I fold them in half and a half again. They're one of my favorite tools for wiping away the wet, wet paint. So I like wiping it away, putting it in. Wiping it away, 
put it in, it in. Now all those paper towels, they're gonna have a lot of paint on them. I use them later on in my collage work. Cool, huh? And throughout all of these processes, different layering effects, I use a red value finder, a red sheet of plexiglass. I can see through it, and what it does, it eliminates all the color, and all you see are the darks and lights and the contrast. So no color, just the darks and lights. Great way to looking at your contrast. Here, I'm emphasizing the focal point by kicking up a little bit of that blue by adding some more of that luminous pink opera into the blue, just to give it some je ne sais quoi. I love doing that with that pink. So I've really made the focal point pretty obvious here and letting it also drip down. Hot blues and some of the pinks on top of the, all the warm background. Now we have this cool color coming forward. Boy, you can't miss that, but it was a, just a little bit too big. So I started wiping away, again, using the alcohol and scraping and wiping it away, like we just previously shown you. So it's a great start to kind of almost, almost getting closer to the finished painting. So the last thing I want to do is reestablish the focal point. I've kind of blended that color blue, the focal point color on my color wheel, kind of blended it in, becomes a nice purple, still in the same family. But now I want to go back and reestablish that. I think it's going to be right about in here. Look at those drips, huh? Great. I mean, you can't miss it. Doesn't have to be the largest part. There we go. Kind of fun, simple. But now I gotta get the tree trunk down in here. Tree trunk down in here. Just one. There we go. Maybe two. Yeah, two. A little more interesting. And let's move in here. Sure, we have a shadow coming down in here. I don't want to make it so obvious. It's still loose. I like it. Loose enough. Yeah. Not too much. A little brightness coming in from the sky. So the sky has been brightened up and reestablished. This kind of makes sense. Top of the tree. Be a little bit brighter because of the sky. Give it some definition, and also some dimension. There we go, something like that. And some in here, too dark. I don't want to make a hole. It's there. I mean, when you compare it with the rest of everything in here, I'm gonna pick up some of this color and put it over here. Paper towel, my favorite brush. These are the sky holes. And it makes it not so isolated. Now the trick is to stop painting. <laughs> the hardest part. So, based on my original intention, I wanted it to be like a bright, brilliant morning spot of sunlight coming through. <clears throat> and uh, still keep it loose. And just gentle, gentle kind of a pain. A lot of energy going on in here, but still softer. Have a lot of the values going close together. And bringing this back again. See, it's now it's the darkest part of the painting compared to all the other brightness. And according to the value finder, it's a great thing to have. I like where all this is going. It's too isolated. So I'm just gonna bring some of this color in here. Yeah, it was too isolated, that blue. Ah, oh, better. Bring it over here. Pulls the painting together a bit more. And I'll have to wipe some of it away. Away from the sunlight.
So it kind of shows the shadow. Open that up just a little bit. And there. Now it's time for me to stand back and really sit down and really look at it. Now, after looking at the painting for a while, I said, maybe that blue is just a little bit too blue. All right, so with some Luminous Opera, my favorite Holbein color, open it up, yeah, much better. It's more homogenous with the rest of the painting, too. It was too isolated. You know, you know, I saw that only because I sat down, stopped, and looked at it. Don't be afraid to look at your painting. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up even up there. Huh, much better, I think. Now, I know some of you might say, stop, stop, stop. Well, then it becomes your painting. <laughs> Let me go through this by myself and figure it out. Yeah. The trick here is to keep painting here, I think, and stopping and looking at it every once in a while. Just enough, just enough. I like it. Just enough to say, hey, I'm the focal point, especially when you compare it to all the hot colors, according to my color wheel, and then blue's the focal point. Bam, there you go. This is gonna be fun. So when my painting matches my original intentions, Blast of Light, that's the title of it, Blast of Light. And then I go back and do the check with my color wheel, color wheel. Blue was the focal point. I think it matches it better now. Exciting. I'm really happy with it. Taking two large sheets, putting them together, becomes a diptych. 22 by 30, one sheet, watercolor paper. Wonderful, I love painting like this. I hope you do too, try it. And thanks again everyone for watching and pass this one on to your friends and I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Hi there, I'm Bob Burridge, a painter. And guess what? I'm going to be painting and teaching at the Dillman's, a four day loosen up. Don't we all want to loosen up? And I'm going to show you how I develop my own ideas, how I get my colors down, and how I take these ideas and turn them into great paintings that I love to do. And you're going to love doing your paintings too, because you're going to be painting the whole time. We cover every different subject, and whatever your ideas are, I'm gonna be supporting you. So loosen up four days. What an idea, huh? And I can't wait at the Dillman's. I'll see you there at the Loosen Up Workshop.